Hello everyone, Gis from Metal Chaos Studio here. In this video, I'll be painting the timbers, the doors, the windows, and stained glass on the biggest window, as well as the terracotta on the chimney, the wall ornaments, basically everything that still needs to be painted on the merchant house from Tabletop World. First, to complete the balcony, I will add brown liner along the edge of the wood. as well as between the stone if need be. There is three nails on the balcony, so I will paint them right away. I paint them with brown liner. It could also be black paint. I've already explained how I paint uh, rust in my previous video, so I will go very fast here. I do a brown base coat, then pale orange, and finally orange rust pigment. So that's it for the balcony. It's now ready to be assembled to the building. Now to complete the interior of the building, I already painted the windows in pale bluish gray. And now I will apply Citadel Seraphim Sepia to shade the windows. I use a brush with a folded tip to reach every corner easily. Same thing for the other window. While the shade is drying in the window, I will complete the rust on the metallic parts inside the building. So I had a brown base coat. Well, I already painted the the metal parts in black and now I, I add a, a brown base coat same thing on each nail then pale orange and finally liquid pigments The shade had time to dry so I will apply some more. I want the windows to look dirty from inside. When the shade is dry I paint the metal bars in black. It may happen that some of the detail are missing, 
on the model. Maybe this happened when the model was removed from the mold and this part of the metal bar was tear off the model. So what you can do is try to paint the surface as if the bars were there and it won't show that much when, when it's done. This is not easy but it shouldn't be harder than painting any other part of the model. Just need to take your time not to make a mess. And then brown. Pale orange. And finally, liquid pigment. Now let's paint the stained glass window. I selected four colors, red, yellow, blue and pale blue, two warm color and two cold color. I already did a tan leather base coat on the window. You may need to apply a second layer on the pale colors. Then I tone down each color with white or in the case of red with yellow and then I highlight the center of each glass.
and then I do an ivory line on top of each square. As you can see, ivory doesn't show much on yellow and pale blue, so I will use pure white. Should be okay like this. Next, I'm gonna paint the bars as if they were made of tin. So I'm gonna paint them in dark gray. Okay, so now I'm gonna highlight the edge of the bars with a lighter tone of gray. I hope you're enjoying this video so far. If you like this painting session, please give it a like. And if you haven't joined the group yet, consider subscribing. It will greatly encourage me to make more videos like this. Okay, so now that we're done painting the interior of the... I'm gonna complete all the elements outside the building. I'm gonna start by painting all the wooden elements with Valeo flat brown. When the base coat is dry, I apply Citadel Earth Shade all over the wood. Next I do a Vallejo English Uniform Dry Brushing.
Next, it's time to add shadow between the planks of the door and in the cracks of the wood. Here I use Ripper MSP Brown Liner. Then I do a Vallejo core brown dry brushing to highlight the wood fiber. Where the roof is missing shingles, I do a ripper leather brown dry brushing. Then a ripper MSP tan leather highlight. Then some Citadel Seraphim Sapia shade. Finally, I do a Ripper MSP Creamy Ivory Highlight on the edge of the planks, the timbers and the shingles. For the windows I start with a Ripper MSP tan leather base coat. I'm gonna paint the glass as if the light from a fireplace is beaming through the window. So I'll be using orange, then I'll tone it down with yellow and ivory. I'll then use Cassandora yellow shade and pure white for the final touch. Same thing for the bigger window, I start with a tan leather base coat. For the bigger window, I'm gonna use the same color I used on the interior side.
Next, I paint the reflection of the light that comes from inside the building on the window frame. Okay, so since I already explained in detail how I paint the metal bar and the rust, I'm gonna fast forward this part. I'm also gonna paint all the metal elements on the doors as well as all the nails. Since I already explained how I paint the tin bars uh, on the interior, I'm gonna fast forward this part. For the exterior plaster, I first base coat the surface with beige. Then I apply a quick shade in the cracks. Then I highlight the surface with a mix of the base coat color and creamy ivory. Another thing I like to do when I'm done painting a section of the model is repaint the area we don't see when the model is assembled with an even color. I will now paint the wall ornament as if they were made of copper covered by verdigris. So I start with a black base coat. For the copper I'm gonna use an old Ripper Miniature Pro Paint Copper. A 
as you can see I'm not putting paint everywhere the black base coat will act as shadow and then the verdigris will cover most of the surface so I don't have to apply copper on the entire surface To create verdigris I will mix Ripper MSP Megat White, Alien Goo and Jungle Camel. When the first layer is dry, I mix the same color to create a lighter tone and apply it as if I was doing a, a dry brushing. For the final touch I mix only Alien Goo and Megat White and apply it on the upper edge. This is a very basic technique but I think the result is convincing. Don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section what you think about this approach to painting copper. For the terracotta, I already stained the surface with dark brown and painted the, the hole in the chimney in black. Now I will mix reddish brown and tan leather to create different blends and paint the terracotta. Then I add tan leather to the mix to create a lighter tone. Then I apply Citadel Agrax Earthshade.
Next, I tap the surface with the brush for the final highlight. This was the last session in a series of 5 videos on the Merchant House. I hope you liked it and that it was useful to some of you. There will be more similar video in the future, so if you haven't joined the channel yet, consider subscribing. This will greatly encourage me to make more videos. In my next video, I'll be working on some miniatures before starting a series of video on Tabletop Wells Blacksmith Forge. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep on painting and take care.